Module 13, Segment 4, Parts Management. In this segment, you will learn the following parts management functions. 1. Adding parts. 2. Reserving stock. 3. Issuing stock. 4. Receiving turn-ins. 5. Creating sub-work orders. And 6. Creating repair orders. Please note that this training segment assumes you already have basic working knowledge of the core quantum control modules and you have completed shop control training segments 1 through 3. To begin, we need to open the work order we added in segment 2. Select the shop control drop-down menu and then select search WO headers. Type the work order number in the work order number field. Select OK. The browsing work orders window opens. Focus on the line of your work order and double click with your mouse or press enter on the keyboard to open the record. Focus on the parts management tab. In segment 3, we learned how to add a part to the bill of materials or BOM. In this segment, we will cover how to add items to the bill of materials when focused on the parts management tab and review other features you may use when adding parts. Items that need to be exchanged, need outside processing, or need internal repair on a sub-work order will all have to be added on the bill of materials and then turned into stock. To put a part onto the bill of materials, select the Add Action button. The Adding Bill of Materials window opens. Let's begin by reviewing the disposition types. Select the Down Arrow button on the Disposition field. The disposition is very important as it identifies the path of the part. Remember that the descriptions on the disposition types can be customized. The consumable and issue types function identically. They both require that stock is reserved and then issued to the work order. The replace disposition type executes an exchange. A part will be reserved and issued from stock and then a core will be removed or turned in from the end item and returned to stock. The repair disposition type allows for an item to be removed from the end item and then reserved to a repair order for outside processing. Once the item has been received back from the outside repair facility, it will be issued back to the work order. The work order disposition type will initiate the removal of a subcomponent from the end item. A sub work order will be opened and the item will be reserved to it. When the sub work order is completed, the subcomponent will be issued back to the parent work order. The inspect type allows for the removal and inspection of a part to decide its disposition. When entering an item on the Bill of Materials from the Parts Management screen, a task is required. The first task on the work order defaults into the task field. You may choose a different task after you enter the part number. Enter the part number 9550587. In our example, we have identified the housing as needing more testing, and we will open a sub-work order to route it. Select Work Order as the disposition. Record the quantity as 1 and the condition as removed. Select OK. Later we will create a sub-work order for this part. Other options on this window integrate with purchasing. The requisition flag and the part needed date interact with the purchase management module. The requisition flag ensures that the part shows as an open need in purchase management. The part need date may be used as a filter when purchasing to ensure that the part is procured in time to meet deadlines. Close the Adding Bill of Materials window. We will now create a repair order for the part added to the BOM in Segment 3. To begin, focus on the part. In our example, we are using a stator disk. Notice that the activity is Repair. We now need to turn in the part to stock. This will record that the part has been removed from the end item and will allow tracking of the part as a stock line in Quantum. We will then be able to create the repair order and reserve the turned in stock line. 
When the part is returned from outside processing, it will be issued back to the work order. Select the Edit Action button. The Editing Bill of Materials window opens. Select the Turn In Action button. The window expands to allow the recording of receiving information on the right side. If the part to be turned in has been marked as serialized in the master part record, you will be required to record the serial number. Next, record the condition of the turn in, such as serviceable. All other fields are optional, however you may want to enter a reason that the part is being sent out for repair. You may either use the reason table-driven field, or enter text in the findings field for this purpose. We will enter excessive wear in the findings field. Select OK. You will be returned to the collapsed view of the editing bill of materials window. We are now ready to add the repair order for this part. Select the process disposition action button at the bottom of the window. A confirmation window opens asking if you want to launch the repair order. Select yes. The browsing repair orders window opens. Select the Add button to create a new repair order. The Browsing Company Entries window opens. Find and select the repair vendor. The Adding Item for Repair window opens, so you may make edits. The part turned in will automatically be reserved to the repair order. For more information on creating repair orders, read Online Help, Chapter 10. Close the Repair Order window to return to the work order. Notice that the Parts Management tab displays the RO number. The Stock Activity panel displays the stock line that was turned in. You may open the repair order from this window by highlighting the RO number and selecting Inspect. Now let's create a sub-work order for the housing we added. We need to turn in the part and then add the sub-work order using the same process as the repair. Focus on the housing. Notice that the activity is work order. Select the Edit Action button and then the Turn In Action button. In the Expanded Editing Bill of Materials window, remember to fill in the serial number, condition, and findings. Select OK. Select Process Disposition. A confirmation window opens asking if you want to launch the work order. Select Yes. The Browsing Work Orders window opens, allowing you to attach this part to an existing sub-work order or create a new one. We will create a new one. Select Add. The Adding Work Order window opens. Note that the customer, reference number, and all other relevant information carries over from the parent work order. Also note that the type automatically defaults to internal. This cannot be changed. When the sub-work order is closed, the part at all costs will automatically roll up back to the parent work order. From this point, the process is the same as adding the parent work order. Once the sub-work order has been added, you can see that a new work order number has been assigned. Directly below is the next highest, or parent work order number. All the same features and functions are available on a sub-work order. Close the sub-work order. Notice that the sub-work order number is displayed. You can access the sub-work order by highlighting the WO number and selecting Inspect. Now we will look at how to reserve stock. Stock reservations can be made manually, as in the Sales Order module, or automatically. You might typically use a combination of both ways. This would allow you to first allocate specific serialized parts, and then reserve consumables automatically based upon condition. We will first reserve a part manually. Focus on the BOM item to reserve and select the BOM Miscellaneous Action button. From the submenu, select Stock Reservations. The Reserving Stock Lines window opens, displaying any available stock in the Stock on Hand panel. Double-click with your mouse on the stock line you wish to reserve or navigate to it with your keyboard arrows and hit the Enter key on the keyboard. The Reserve Stock window opens. This confirms the quantity being reserved. Select OK to complete the reservation. If you have reserved the total quantity needed for the line item, you will be returned to the Parts Management window. 
If additional stock is required, you will remain in the reserving stock lines window. You can now repeat the previous steps to reserve additional stock or close out the window to be returned to the parts management window. The auto reserve feature allows you to automatically reserve available stock for all outstanding bill of material items by matching on the condition code. Condition levels may be used when more than one condition will satisfy the request. The higher the level assigned to a condition code, the fewer matches it will accept. This field is stored in the condition code table. For example, if either condition new or factory new is acceptable, they would be assigned the same level, so either will be reserved. Select the Parts Management Action button, and then select Auto Reserve from the submenu. When the function is completed, an information window opens, indicating the total quantity that was reserved to the BOM. Select OK to close this window. The Quantity Reserved column displays allocated totals. As you select the BOM items, the Stock Activity panel displays the stock line numbers, serial numbers, and other details for each line. Once stock is reserved, a pick ticket can be printed so that warehouse staff can pull the parts. Select the Global Action button, and then Print from the submenu. Select Print Pick Ticket. The Pick Ticket Print Settings window opens. Remember that you will need to select Edit to make changes. Here you would select Printer as the destination, and then choose the Warehouse Printer. Enable the option Only Reserved. Select OK, and then Print. Let's review the sample pick ticket. All the information that the warehouse staff needs is printed on this form. The stock issued number is the work order number. Notice that each part is highlighted. The location, warehouse, quantity, and serial number are also included. Once parts have been picked, they can be issued. This has two significant functions. First, the stock line in inventory is relieved of the reserved quantity. If that brings the stock line quantity to zero, the stock line will be moved to a historical table. Secondly, the cost of the issued parts leaves inventory and is moved to your work in progress, or WIP total. Select the Parts Management Action button, and then select Issue from the submenu. The Issue Stock window opens, displaying all stock currently reserved. You may change the number in the quantity field if you don't want to issue the reserved total. Any parts reserved but not issued will remain on reserve. When you are ready to issue the parts, select the Done Action button. You will be returned to the Parts Management window, where you will see that the reserved quantities have moved to the Quantity Issued column. Notice that all stock line information for the issued parts is still visible in the Stock Activity panel. You can remove part reservations by selecting the Parts Management Action button and Unreserve BOM from the submenu. Be careful when using this feature as it does not allow you to choose the stock you wish to unreserve but removes all stock reservations. To reverse any parts that have been either issued or turned in, select the Parts Management Action button. Then the Undo Stock Activity command from the submenu. The Stock Activity Undo window opens. Enter the quantity you wish to undo in the Quantity Reverse column. Let's enter 1. Select the Done Action button to complete the process. Unissued parts will be returned to stock. On the Parts Management tab, notice that the part now has Quantity 1 issued. The Stock Activity panel shows a negative 1, indicating that one part was returned to stock. To recap what we have learned in this session, we have added parts to the bill of materials and created a repair order and a sub-work order for parts on the bill of materials. We have reserved and issued parts and learned how to unreserve and unissue parts. You may now proceed to Segment 5, Quoting from the Work Order.